Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to review the Pablo Mast 22 pen display. Now this is actually a monitor that you can draw on, so you do need to connect it to a computer in order to use it. Now this unit that I have here, this is actually a review unit that was sent to me from Pablo. So I have already done the unboxing video a few months ago, uh, sorry about this late review. If you want to check out the things that I included, more angles of this monitor, you can watch the unboxing video. The link will be in the video description below. Today's video will focus on the drawing performance and a little bit about the design and the screen. By the way, if you find this review a bit too long, you can check out the text review. The link is also in the video description below. Before we jump into the drawing performance, let's talk about the design and the screen first. So this is a 21.5 inch IPS panel. The colors look great out of the box. I have already color calibrated it using the Spider 5 Pro and got a readout of 99% sRGB and up to 80% OWB RGB. So the colors on this screen, they are fantastic. And because this is an IPS panel, you can see that it has pretty good viewing angles like this. So when you are adjusting the angle of the screen, you are putting it back down like this. The colors, they do not shift much. Now on the screen, there is a matte screen protector already applied. So that screen protector actually has some anti-glare um, coating on it. Well, because it's a matte screen protector. So if you are placing this if you have placed this monitor beside a light source, for example, I have a large window on the side, it's going to diffuse the light source and you're going to have some sort of white glaze like this. So it's best to use uh, monitors with a matte screen surface further away from a strong light source. So if you are viewing it from the front like this, um, I don't see a lot of glare, a lot of white haze going on and the colors, are, they look they look fine when you're viewing the screen straight on. Now I like the bezel, which is a bit thick, but it really helps. The black borders, they really help to sort of focus your attention onto the screen. Overall, this pen display, it looks and feels really premium. Let me show you the side profile. So you can see that it's really thin. This is how thick it is. And there are a few ports behind. There is one USB port that connects to the computer so that um, your pen can be recognized on this screen. And there is a HDMI port. A HDMI cable is provided. That's the only graphics cable that is provided. And lastly, there is the power. All right, let me show you the stand. So this is how the stand looks like. Sorry about all the cables. Now. The strange thing is this part here, this is not fixed so you can move around. So when you're adjusting the screen, um, be careful about this. This is the lowest angle it can go, which is actually quite a comfortable drawing angle. And this is the highest angle it can go. From what I can see behind, this monitor doesn't seem to be able, I mean, you won't be able to VESA mount this screen because uh, I don't think you can remove this whole part. And the cables, they come out from the side and not the bottom. So when you put the screen down, it doesn't, I mean, the cables, they, they don't get in the way, which is great. The menu buttons are actually behind and it's a bit difficult to assess them, so usually if I need to use them, I would lift the monitor up like this. But thankfully, once you set your brightness and contrast, you don't really have to um, fiddle with those buttons anymore. Speaking of brightness, the screen can reach slightly over 200 nits of brightness. And right now I have it at 170 nits, which is quite a comfortable brightness for me to work with. This particular unit that I have has some issues with the backlight at the top edges. So you can see here, there's this black shadow. Let me move around to the center. Can you see that black shadow there? And here as well. 
So the issue with the backlight appears here, here and here and it's only noticeable when the monitor is flat down like this. This is the pen and the stand provided. This pen supports... This is the pen and the stand provided. Now this pen supports up to slightly over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. So that makes this pen quite sensitive. Now this is powered by battery, so you do need to charge this when the battery life runs out and the charging port is behind. There is no eraser behind. You charge this using the USB cable that is provided. Pablo has actually included two pens, so when the battery life for this runs out, you can use another pen or you can charge this and use it at the same time. It still works while it's charging. So this is the stand with eight replacement tips and this nib remover here right in the middle. You can place this horizontally as well as vertically. Now I like the grip section here. This is a large piece of rubber. It is not going to slip when you're holding it. Two side buttons here that you can configure to different mouse functions. The whole pen is made of plastic but it has a nice grip and a nice weight to it. The gap between the drawing surface, the glass and the LCD is very thin so it really makes it feel like you are drawing on the surface. And the cursor, it looks, it always looks like it's beneath the pen tip. Parallax is not an issue but there is some misalignment when the pen and the cursor is near the edges of the screen. It's just a very slight misalignment and I have never clicked on some things that I do not want to click on by mistake. And now I'm going to show you the driver on Mac OS and then we'll test the different graphic apps before we jump over to look at how this pen display performs on Windows. There's really not a lot of features in the driver. You can customize the side buttons to various mouse click. Unfortunately, display toggle, it doesn't work here. So when I connect another monitor, when I try to use this shortcut the cursor, it doesn't jump to the other monitor. And here, this is where you can test the pressure sensitivity and change it if you need to using this slider. And that's it. This monitor doesn't have any physical shortcut buttons on the left and right side, so there's no need to customize any more buttons. This is Photoshop CC on the Mac. Now, drawing performance, it's pretty fantastic. The lines, they come out just the way I want them to. And this pen, it's very sensitive, but it does have that initial activation force. So if you were to just let the pen glide on the surface without any pressure, no lines will come out. But once you add that little tiny little bit of pressure, you can get a very thin line. The lines are pretty smooth with Photoshop. If you need to use any shortcuts, well, then you will need to use your keyboard shortcuts because there aren't any physical shortcut buttons on the side. Drawing experience on Photoshop, it's pretty nice. I'm going to connect this line with another line to see if I can get it to be smooth. So I can, and here as well. All right, there is some slight misalignment here. Let me do it again. And now it's a bit smoother. If you need a little bit more accuracy, you can hit the caps lock button to get the cursor to turn into a crosshair. When my pen is on the left side and I draw these vertical lines, I can see my pen tip and I can see that the lines, they appear to the right side of the pen tip. So there is some misalignment. And unfortunately, the tablet driver, it doesn't have any way to calibrate this misalignment. So when you're drawing sometimes, especially when you are joining lines like this, for example, I'm going to join this line, there might be this misalignment that happens. So the thing, I mean, the workaround is to press the caps lock button to turn the cursor into crosshair so that when you draw, you can know exactly where that line is going to come out. Because if the cursor is circular like this, it's not as accurate compared to the crosshair cursor. Since I'm mostly drawing in the middle of the screen, that misalignment 
it doesn't really affect me much unless of course when I move my pen to this side and I need to draw something then yes I would um, notice the misalignment but most of the time uh, when drawing in the middle here no issues at all Prejudice sensitivity doesn't work by default with Adobe Illustrator on the Mac I tried a workaround that involves installing the Wacom Intros driver and the pen stops working so you can just assume that there is not going to be any pressure sensitivity when working with Adobe Illustrator I have Affinity Photo as well as Affinity Designer and Pressure works well with these two apps Right, let's use Kritar this is Kritar version 4.1.7 pressure sensitivity works pretty well and this is very responsive the lines taper well thin and thick transition dots this is Medibank Paint Pro pressure works well thin lines thick lines thin and thick curves are very smooth I usually do not have any issues with Medibank Paint Pro and that's the same here as well this is Clip Studio Paint it's working very well the lines come out just the way I like so most of the graphic apps appear to work well with this pen display with the exception of Adobe Illustrator which doesn't have any pressure sensitivity so let's test out Windows now I am on Windows 10 the misalignment doesn't seem to be OS specific so with Windows 10 as I move my pen close to the edge here I can sort of see some misalignment as well especially when the pen is sort of like less than one centimeter away from the edge but once it's in this area no problems at all it's a very slight misalignment this is the Windows driver this is driver version 2.01.1 and this is where you can customize the pen um, most of the features here are pretty similar to that on the Mac OS driver you can change the pressure sensitivity you can assign certain uh, functions to the mouse button actually there are more options here and here it says that you can uh, coordinate mode switching hotkey but it doesn't work I mean the monitor switching it doesn't work here and this monitor and pen calibration here again it doesn't really work so the only things you can customize are the mouse buttons and the pressure sensitivity this is Photoshop CC on Windows the strokes they taper quite well pressure sensitivity works fine thin and thick transition is smooth curves are smooth and drawing wise um, again very satisfactory it's best to use the crosshair again for better precision this is Adobe Illustrator CC on Windows and we have the option of pressure here and pressure works pressure works really well this is Krita on Windows pressure works fine it's pretty responsive this is Medibank Paint Pro on Windows and pressure works fine it's pretty responsive no issues at all hatching lines are great the lines they taper very well curves um, very smooth transition from thin to thick very smooth as well this is Clip Studio Paint on Windows pressure works very well thin and thick the strokes they taper very nicely 
curves are very smooth. I have Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo on my Windows machine as well, but unfortunately, these two apps, they do not work on this pen display. More specifically, they do not work with this pen. So with the two Affinity apps, this pen, it doesn't work. You see the cursor here? It doesn't work. But when I minimize this window, you can see that the cursor is now following the pen. All right, let me conclude this video by telling you the things that I like and do not like. I like the design of this monitor. It looks and feels very premium. The build quality is excellent. The colors are fantastic. 99% sRGB support as I have measured. Drawing on it feels really good because the gap between the drawing surface and the LCD is very thin, so it feels like you're drawing on the surface itself. As for the overall drawing experience, it really depends on the app that you use. Generally speaking, most of the drawing apps that I have used, they work pretty well with the exception of Adobe Illustrator CC on Mac OS where the pressure sensitivity, it doesn't work. And with Windows, these two apps, Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer, they don't work with this pen. But otherwise, the other drawing apps, Photoshop, Krita, Clip Studio, Minibank Paint Pro, um, they work pretty well. So my overall drawing experience is a positive one. Now, um, the one thing that I do not like about this screen is there is this slight misalignment when the pen is close to the edge and there is no way to calibrate that because the driver has very limited functionality. But thankfully, most of the time when I'm drawing, I don't have any issues with uh, placing down the wrong line or clicking wrong things because um, even when the pen is near the edge, you can still see the cursor so you know what you are clicking on. And when I'm drawing, most of the time I'm drawing here. I don't draw here or here or at the edges, so not really that. A uh, big of an issue. And that is all I have to say about Pablo Must 22 pen display. If I have any updates to this video review, I will put the updates in the text review. You can check out the text review through the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next video. Bye.